This is a 1970 Mark I on Escort RS 1600. Um, it was brought into the United States by a fellow that immediately pulled the VA Cosworth engine out and put it in a formula car. And he put in a pushrod Cortina motor and sold it. And it wound up on the streets of Oklahoma City and Edmond, Oklahoma as a street car. It's been street licensed continuously all that time. Uh, eventually somebody put in a Lotus Twin Cam along the way. Uh, then a fellow decided he and his son were going to make it a vintage racer back in about 96 or 97. And they sold the twin cam motor. They bought a proper Cosworth BDA race motor put back in it. But they never hooked it all up and made it run. And the son lost interest and uh, wanted to go race Miatas. So it sat in his garage for about six years. And knew of the car and called me and said, do you want to go in half these on an Escort? And I said, I could never afford it. He said, well, maybe. And so we, we acquired the car as kind of an unfinished conversion from a street car to a race car. And uh, I had just retired, so I had time on my hands, so I finished the job. I did all the wiring and that sort of thing. Greg, the other owner of the car, did all the mechanical plumbing. And uh, so we, we got it on the track in May of 06 for the first time. background has always been an English Ford racer. I started in 1966 with a 997 Anglia and then uh, acquired an X-Works Lotus Cortina and raced it for about three years in SCCA and IMSA. And uh, so then stayed out of racing until we acquired the Escort in 2006, prepared it and uh, been running it ever since in uh, Corinthian Vintage Auto Racing, C-Bar. Um, the the majority of escorts in the U.S., there aren't many because they were never imported to the country, but the majority of them were ex-rally cars, so they're carrying several hundred pounds of welded-in beef-ups. This car, having been on the street all its life, is, is several hundred pounds lighter than most of the other escorts being raced. Um, almost all the other cars on the track today in the U.S. and Canada have the big bubble flares, but Corinthian Vintage Auto Racing limits small sedans to a 7-inch wheel rim and a 205-60-13 tire, and I can fit that under the existing arches, so I haven't cut the car up and put the big bubble flares that you're so used to seeing on a racing escort, but it does okay. <laughs> Escorts were homologated with both a four-speed and a five-speed as options. And uh, it was also homologated with a dry sump option. And this is a dry sumped engine. The oil tank is in the trunk, or the boot, I yep. should say. <laughs> Must Having have lifted it. the bonnet, let me get out of the sun. Cool. Awesome. It's uh, two side draft 45 millimeter Webers. The engine basically is similar to the Cosworth FVA Formula 2 engine. And back in uh, 69 or early 70, Ford Advanced Vehicle Operations, AVO, uh, shoehorned a, a FVA into an Escort back when they were only building uh, pushrod motors and twin cams. And it ran like stink. And they said, well, you know, if we put a belt drive instead of a gear drive, we'll call that engine a BDA, and we can build a thousand Escorts with that engine in it, homologate it, and then we can race and rally Escorts with a BDA. Yep. So that was the genesis of this, and this is an original one of the thousand that was built to homologate the BDA powered escort. Wow. A lot of fun. This is stupid. This is, yeah.
you will know what it is, or do no, people come up to you now? You're one of the few people to walk up and know <laughs> that this was an escort. Yeah. Most people say think it's a Cortina. Yeah. Um, the few that know it's an escort invariably have a UK accent. <laughs> yep. I yep. They, they have an, a, an annual deal in June here, a Ford Performance and Shelby meet, and part of that is a car show downtown in Tulsa. And everybody, the race cars obviously have to be trailered down there. And I've had it down there at that several times, and I've had people from England and Scotland and Ireland walk up, and, and, and New Zealand walk up and and want to talk about escorts, but <laughs> our, almost no one else has any idea what it is. And when they do see it, they just think it's a dumpy little English car and it couldn't possibly be fast. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But, uh, its power to weight ratio is pretty good. Uh, this Cosworth motor, even though it's only 1,601 cc's, it's probably making in the vicinity of 200 horsepower at 9,000 RPM. And uh, the car weighs about 1,800 to 1,900 pounds. So uh, its power to weight ratio is pretty much the same as the old Pontiac GTO, which people thought was a fast car back in the day. Yeah. So it's not quite as fast at the top end because of aerodynamic drag versus horsepower. But coming out of a slow corner, I can often stay right with a, a Mustang right on his rear until we get to the straight, and then he'll walk off from me about another 10 or 15 miles an hour faster. Yeah. yeah. It's a fun car to drive. And of course, it's right-hand drive. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, sure. having raced the Lotus Cortina that was right-hand drive and having lived in England for a year and driving over there, I'm, I'm actually very, I prefer right-hand drive. Most mm -hmm. people are right-handed. I keep my right hand on the steering wheel, shift with the left. Yep. I like it. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Red Porsche, Rolf, uh, Ralph, I guess it is, um, he and I are fairly closely matched. He's maybe a second a lap quicker, so I have to really work if I'm going to keep him in sight. Yeah. But he's not in my class. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, gotcha. Um, Last race, yeah. you guys were uh, definitely yeah, fighting we were, it out. We were, yeah. we were fighting it out. We had a great race, and uh, I finally let him pass because he was he was staying so close to me that I figured he can go uh, just a little bit faster, probably, and I didn't want to hold him up. So yeah. no. I finally waved him by, and then he only gained about 50 yards uh, in the last couple of laps on me, so he wasn't that much faster. But it was just a fun fight, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. And that's what it's all about. And, yep. uh,
when you're uh, out on the track? I would say eight tenths. Yeah. Maybe nine tenths occasionally, if you, but I, you know, it'd be very hard to get replacement sheet metal and stuff. So I try to stay this side of bending the car. <laughs> So I was gonna say, when you're in traffic, do you are you very aware of where yeah, people are and, just for that reason? There's nothing to be won. There's no trophies. There's no prizes. So my goal is to go home with a car, same shape I brought it in, yeah. and and have fun and kind of showcase the car. Yeah. That's what this is all about. And uh, whether or not I finish first or or second or third, nobody cares. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you got a little pride on the line. But uh, boy, if it comes to giving way on a corner or taking a chance of bending the car, have at it. <laughs> <laughs>